kill on that. What power is that? 20? 15? Okay, turn up to 20. Now let's go ahead and adjust the power. We're on 20 power right now. I'm going to adjust her up just a little bit. Okay, more. What power is that? 25. Go up to 30. Go up to 40. At 40 power. Oh yeah. And we have the, on this model, the Horus H32 reticle. Are you getting scared yet? So we have the optic here. Got your nice instructional manual here. Now I'm not a fan of the name Horus because it's an ancient Egyptian god, which I don't think is very cool. However, the reticle design is interesting. We have a grid network. If you have an area where you can spot your splash very easily, you can situate this in such a way to where you can get this centered on your target or you can lollipop the target here and then you can call very precise fire direction um, you know, based on exactly where it hits in this grid. So there's no guessing, there's no interpreting uh, using spatial perception or guessing. Um, so for certain applications where it's very arid, we have very clear splash, this style of reticle is nice. Another nice feature is all this stuff right here is situated kind of on the lower part of the reticle. In the lower one third, maybe you could call it, or towards the bottom of the middle. <laughs> and that allows you this whole area up here, perfectly clear for bullet trace observation. So as your bullet trace is gonna come way up here, it's gonna come back down into your target zone. I don't like it when stuff is obstructing in this area. So this is a smart placement of a reticle like this. And so let's see how she looks in real life. Bubble wrap. Oh, sorry. Okay, so it's wrapped in plastic. There goes a rubber band. Uh, Non-edible silicone gel deals. Now look at that. Made in Japan. This is about the size of a rifle scope, a little shorter. It's not super heavy. This might be something that is very easy to take a field. The Elite Tactical, rubber armor coated. Um, now the size is very small. The weight proportional to the size is indicative of quality, which means it's stout for its size in terms of heftiness, which I like. So you just grab, you actually gotta grab the cap, okay? <laughs> the surface is very, very, very grippy. I like the, the green color. So you can be sneaky guy. And there's how you remove the cap. If you're not going to lose your cap, that's a smart, very smart design feature. You have screws here. You can put Picatinny rails on here, okay? Uh, there's a lot of attachment points on this optic for your uh, tertiary accessories, you could say. And we have... Pull the steel off. That's also attached to the lanyard. Very, very wise. I always lose these things. We have our magnification ring from 8 power. We're just going to turn it. That's a very, very tight, nicely made feel up to 40 power. Nice and smooth. And you can tell it's built pretty tight. And we have a nice, very grippable surface. If you're wearing gloves or whatever, you could easily get a grip of that deal. And we have our other focus adjustments here. I presume, and we'll play with this. We have our ocular adjustment here, I presume. So this is an incredible option if you want something compact, small, footprint, lightweight. 
Um, this is much smaller than the other unit. Uh, the optical quality is pretty close. The bigger unit actually with the much larger lenses is a little bit better optical quality in my opinion. However, this is very good. The reticle design in this is really nice. It has a lot of really cool features. Also, if I was gonna take something on the field and you needed something uh, that was relatively easy to get around and had all the feature sets you need in a price range that's affordable, Bushnell, in my opinion, does a very good job when they want to in terms of good optical quality. That's one thing they've done very well in the last 15, 20 years. This particular model, like we said, is made in Japan. And the feature sets are very, very nice for long range precision shooters who are particularly looking for something to double as uh, optic for directing fire for your, uh, your guy who's shooting as a spotter. Uh, so this is a very nicely configured optic that has really executed most things you'll need for field applications, in my opinion, uh, for a good decent spotting scope for precision shooting and fire direction that works pretty good, that you can also carry around. Okay, let's uh, get the ocular in focus. I'm actually gonna, the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna look up at the sky, and I'm just gonna hold this like this, and I want that reticle, I'm gonna ba back off on my magnification. So I'm gonna look at the sky, and I'm gonna look at the reticle, and I'm gonna focus the reticle. Oh, that's not it. Not the right answer. Here we go. So I'm turning this until I look at it and get that reticle sharp. There we go. Now my reticle's in focus, okay? Now I can actually loosen up the steel, get it pointed down range. Okay. So at 20 power, the entire square part, the grid pattern of that horse reticle is in view, but it's covering a good chunk of the bottom edge of the scope. And we have the lateral extensions that go out well beyond our field of view. I'm gonna crank it back down to eight power. Now this is gonna be great for scanning for targets. So if I'm scanning the horizon for, for targets, it's nice to have a spotting scope that you can actually come down to a, something like 8 power. So you have a much greater field of view for scanning and finding the target in the first place. Like, okay, there's one right there, actually. So I'm going to tighten this down. Now I can micro adjust here, left and right. I'm going to come right there. Now I can adjust my power up accordingly. And we have a first focal plane reticle. So that reticle is staying proportional to the target. Okay, that's what I'm looking at. Now I want to actually measure that target. So I'm cranking it all the way up. Now when I crank the scope up to 40 power, only the top half of the square portion of the reticle is in view, um, which if I use this properly, at the very top edge of the reticle is a series of little hash marks that come up in a chiastic form in a chiasm, which is a, re a reverse V. It's in the Greek alphabet, the chi. But um, you have a chiastic structure, that reticle on the top and the middle spine, it looks like it's one mil. And then the next one is 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, and 0.5. A really smartly designed feature for getting those fine measurements. Sometimes when left to your spatial perception, it is difficult to get an exact reading on the size of the target. So that's a very nice feature to have. And of course you can stack it on there. Um, so you could have three you know, squares below plus the 0 0.9 or 0 0.7, so 3.7 mils, depending on the target height and the size of your target. You can then use the formula to figure out your distance to the target, as we show in our 101 instructional videos and teach at our classes, obviously. All good elementary basic stuff. So you have a passive way to range targets with precision using the reticle and not having to project energy across the battlefield in if you were ever going to fight a first world enemy if the russians ever came over and wanted to play then we could uh, not have to shoot lasers at them which they can very easily identify and intercept that they're being lased so that's pretty cool so that's very very handy when zoomed in on 40 power for that of course if i was going to do 
shot observation, I'm going to come back to at least 20 power for actual shot observation. That's going to give me a full view. Now that entire grid is in view, I would place my target in the middle of that grid or maybe towards the top in all honesty. In uh, my opinion, I like to have a very clear view of exactly where the target's at. That's your preference. But you have a huge amount of real estate above the reticle where you can actually see what the heck is going on with your bullet trace. You really thought you could get away with it, big guy? Alpha 9 or Tango 1 3, this is Tyree for your king. Indexing this distillation to 7. Uh oh. Wait, yeah. Uh -huh. What in the hell are you holding? Ah, it's not here. It's an MP49, it's a saw. Target's got good cover. It's a danger space for a headshot at TRP5. Hi, Mom. It's me and my pals. Say hi, guys. Hi, hi guys, Mom! <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, man. You're shorter than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> These are super. Hi, Thank you.